accused a church called the Phoenix Goddess Temple for running a house of prostitution masquerading as religion. They arrested 20 women and two men. Investigators say that the church offered sexual acts in exchange for monetary donations. I am not a whore. Tonight on Crowded Planet Radio, exclusively heard here only, the Phoenix Goddess Temple are our guests tonight. I'm Bunker Bob, along with Wolf Boy Jack. Woo! We got Danger Wayne running the control room. Move, man. <laughs> and we got very cool Vince, man in the phones, and doing our research there in the control room. KFNX News Talk Radio 1100. Tonight, uh, live with us, live and local, we have a couple members of the, I don't know if we should say the Phoenix Goddess Temple or the former Phoenix Goddess Temple. Uh, you may have heard in the news that they have been shut down. I guess uh, there's a it could case. Be like a home is where your heart is. Um, so it's still the Phoenix Goddess Temple wherever they are. That's true. It's a, there's a certain spirit. Right. Whether the uh, whether the physical location is there or not. That's changed. Yeah. That's an interesting thing. You you cannot stop spirituality. It's like the Babylonian captivity with the Jews when they were first persecuted 2,000 years ago. They learned that their religion was it was it was about more than than uh, you know about the temple. <laughs> Do you realize you know, the show it, you're on? It's Mr. always history. <laughs> it's always good to have one person at least who went to college <laughs> to guide the rest of us. All right, with no further ado, no, no, I mean, I mean, not that Vince didn't go to college. We, we're having a private moment here at the at the show just for a quick second here. Vince, I'm sorry. You're, you're that was, not gonna. You're the only one no. here who doesn't have a degree. Right, that's true, but. But but the thing is, I tried. I tried. But they, they just wouldn't let me finish. Anyway, Wayne, would you let me finish already? So, uh, no. Yeah, sure, I'll let you finish. No problem. This this wasn't anything to do with very cool Vince, you know, and me casting Actually, aspersions. It's, it's, it's vegetarian Vince now. Oh, okay. We'll get to that in another show. But we have guests waiting on the line. And, Vince, let me just clarify that, you know, since you are more in the research category tonight, I guess I was referring to the contribution on air here more. But you, of course, as ever, Vince, can raise your hand whenever you'd like to contribute. Okay. <clears throat> Again, for those of you who have just tuned in in what has turned out somehow to be a five-minute long intro, let me just apologize <laughs> right here to our guests. We have on the line from uh, right here from locally in Phoenix, we have uh, Tracy, who would be, I guess, uh, she was the head mother or goddess of the temple, and uh, as well her son, who also was a practitioner at the temple, is on the line with us from California. Tracy, thanks for joining us. Hello, good evening. Thanks for being here. And Ben, thank you for joining us from California. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for having me. All right, we appreciate you taking some time out with us. Uh, obviously, this is a story that this evening, it has a couple of angles. We do want to, of course, understand what's going on legally, but we also do want to get into the practices of the temple sacred sexuality, tantric sex, things of that nature. So pretty much, you know, uh, the whole we report, you know, and the audience decides to see what they think of the, sh should I say Phoenix Goddess Temple, Tracy, or is it the former Phoenix Goddess Temple? What, no, what? It's, it's the Phoenix Goddess Temple. We absolutely will be vindicated, and the temple, just like the Phoenix bird, will rise again in the Valley of the Sun. All right. Well, you obviously feel confident about Oh, yes, I do. So what what would be the uh, biggest thing that, that gives you that confidence? Is it uh, freedom of religion, or what exactly gives you that confidence? Well, you know, one of my title actually is Mystic Mother, and the term, uh, when we get into mysticism, it means that you're taking in information not only through the five senses, taste, touch, sight, sound, and smell, which is physical reality, but you're also open to the creator's leading and so uh, I get mystic messages all the time that keep me on track and honestly um, I've had premonitions uh, that I might have to defend the mother this way and uh, the mother aspect of God has been um, violently overthrown silenced some might like to use the word snuffed out we all know that that's a, that's a harsh word uh, but the, the, the mother aspect of the creator has been truly silenced 
as a voice of spiritual and therefore moral authority. I, I had a little poem I wanted to share. Just it's real short. Before you, before you do the poem, let me just yeah. let me just uh, remind listeners: KFNX News Talk Radio, 1100 AM. Crowded Planet Radio, exclusive, live and local here tonight. We're talking to folks from the Phoenix Goddess Temple. And, Tracy, uh, I apologize. If I were a better host, I would have had the Mystic Mother title more clear in front of me. Um, and if you could, just you were saying that you get mystic messages. Could you just explain that a little more? Absolutely. It's interesting because um, in our culture, uh, there's there's, there's energy, and everything is energy. Energy is always moving. And people either go with the flow and integrate, or they resist it. And when you resist it, it will make you kind of crazy. And that's where people take medication. The last thing I, I read about this was that 70 million Americans are on some kind of uh, medication for mental conditions. Um, Instead of fighting uh, things that come into my brain, I, I love God. I, I, to be religious is to just say, I appreciate, I am, I'm in gratitude about life. I'm in gratitude for my body. I'm in gratitude for the people that I love and that love me back. I'm in gratitude for the worthy opponent because they make me think smarter, harder, stronger than I ever. I mean, I have to think smarter than I've ever thought before. Tracy, let me ask you, um, what you referenced there um, about, you know, when when things are challenging and all that, you know, the types of things that people would take medication, you know, you seek maybe a spiritual side in that respect. I just wanted to ask you, the the religion of Scientology, I believe it has a religious status. Uh, Wolf Wolf Boy Jack, my lawyer, is that correct? Taxes? In terms of however they, I know that yeah, I know that they they claim the uh, the religious exemptions and deductions. Okay, so 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 Scientology is considered you know a religion enough in a respect. The IRS, yeah. They yeah they they happen to uh, also not believe in using medication and that sort of thing. They have their whole processes, clearing you know your yes. conscience and no, all that. They went they went to court and had a landmark decision. Somebody took them to court, I think it was about eight years ago. I don't quote me because I'm, you know, I'm not the person that, that looked this up. But it was a lawyer, one of the constitutional lawyers that we spoke with. And he basically told me that um, uh, the Church of Scientology was challenged because part of this clearing process is as you raise, as you go up in the ranks inside their church, uh, to get to higher and higher levels of initiation, they require you to donate large sums of money. And somebody, like, you know, you get to a certain level and they want 5000 You get to another level and they want 50000 And you want to raise to a higher level of learning and, and then being able to be considered a high initiate. You actually have to give them large sums of money. And somebody in their church said, hey, that doesn't sound right. Why should money have to do with... Um, you know, how high I can go up in this church. And they went to court and fought this concept, and basically they said that energy is money, money is energy, and if you're accumulating, uh, if you really are working with energy and the life force in these immaculate ways, you've been cleared of all your blocks, you're going to have a lot of money, and giving us $100,000 isn't going to be a problem for you. And so literally money is energy, and if you have lots of money, you're a high-level initiate. And they were, were challenged in court for that. There's been, you know, so many religions have had to fight to have their unusual practices. Um, I have a, a family member who's a Jehovah Witness, and um, one of their unusual practices is they don't do surgery with blood transfusion. Yeah, and another one have... of their unusual practices, which I don't like, is they knock on my door too damn much. <laughs> but that's another story. Tracy, let me... Um... Let me just. Uh, I'm just uh, saying, people go to court to fight for their. Yeah. It's pretty normal in America. So yeah. I'm I'm thinking that maybe there are some aspects of the Scientology case that might reference yours. So uh, we'll we'll talk more about that too. But let me not leave uh, Ben hanging out there just as a listener too long. Okay, now now Ben Ben is your son Tracy, correct? Yes. He All was right. Blood related. Yes. All right. Family of origin. Yes. So Ben, uh, also a uh, practitioner at the Phoenix Goddess Temple, please explain for our audience uh, more. You know what your 
uh, background or practicing involved and, and give us a little bit of history on that for the next couple of minutes, if you would. And I just want to say oh. this. I'm going to, I'm going to cut in as a protective mother bear. Okay. Uh, Ben's been gone from the temple for nearly a year. And what's interesting about the goddess temple is that very few of the men actually ever received any donations or offerings for their work. Most of the men in the goddess temple were there in service to the goddess. Very, very few of them ever made any money doing the healings, but they did this out of love. Okay. And, well, like, then, clarify. then, then let's have Ben let's have Ben explain what that too. let's have Ben explain what that service then involved because. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know that whether that meant doing laundry around the place or what. Why don't you tell us, Ben? Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Yeah, well, originally when we first created the temple, um, you know, the model, and as it evolved over the last decade pretty much, uh, my initial role um, as one of the thinkers of the concept of, yeah, this is a religion, this all this information that even present Ben, your your phone is uh, cutting out with us pretty bad here. Um, if his phone did, I want to okay. comment on this. In the goddess, we, we actually practiced many um, streams, wisdom streams, around energy healing and sacred sexuality. And in the goddess temple, in the ancient goddess temple, the role of the masculine was to be the devoted sun son. And I, I, I mentioned this before we went on air, but in the goddess temple, the man... Is a, so, and in t many of the Tantra wisdom streams as well, that the masculine is associated with the sun, the ball of fire that's up in the sky that gives all life. And so uh, one of the titles that we give the, all of the men, and this would even apply to Christ, Jesus, he is the great Kumara, the sun sun. He is the S-U-N and the S-O-N. He's the devoted, loving son of the mother. And in this religion, uh, the men... Uh, love and respect and honor their mothers in a very strong way. And it doesn't mean that they um, don't, you know, the Bible talks about you, a, a man must uh, leave his mother so that he can cleave to his wife. And that still goes on, of course. But in the goddess uh, religion, which we practice, we have an interfaith church. We, we bring in many, many, it's a very much an American melting pot of many wisdom streams. But in the goddess tradition, the masculine uh, upholds and honors the mother. All right. Well, we're about to hit a break here in a few seconds. We are talking to some folks from the Phoenix Goddess Temple here at Crowded Planet Radio. A few more segments with them. When we come back, I'd still like to hear a day in the life uh, of Ben, the practitioner at uh, Phoenix Goddess Temple. Stay with us. Every day is a holiday in Healthy Habit Health Food Store, 6029 North 7th Street. Tune in to Healthy Health Call discussing the latest breakthroughs of integrative medicine. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 to 10 a.m. and call with your questions, 602-266-1000. Discover world-class physicians, medical researchers, Hollywood celebrities, professional athletes, and testimonials from our patients and consumers of natural products. Call 602-266-1000. Afraid of high car repair bills? Would a $4,500 engine replacement hurt your savings? <laughs> Just a little? Cover America Auto wants to give you a free quote on peace of mind protection. If your car breaks down, we'll pay the repair shop on covered repairs directly. No waiting for reimbursement. No hassle. If you're driving without coverage or if your warranty is about to expire, call us. You can trust you will be protected. Our claims department has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau with 50 years of dependability. I just brought my car in, had the transmission replaced, and they paid the bill. Plus, our direct to the public rates can save you thousands off of what you Dealers may charge. Call for your free no obligation quote now at 800 681 1793. 800 681 1793. 24 hour roadside assistance and rental cars included on most plans. Don't wait. Call for your free quote now. 800 681 1793. 800 681 1793. 
Heinz Benefits Consulting is an Arizona-based firm that customizes benefit solutions for you and your business. They'll help your organization improve financial performance and increase employee satisfaction. Why work with Heinz Benefits? Experience, strategy, market knowledge, and world-class customer service. Call Cindy or Bernie Heinz at 602-952-0370. Heinz Benefits Consulting where better information leads to better decisions. Call today, 602-952-0370. Well, hubba hubba ding ding, who invented this thing? They genuinely believe that there's nothing wrong here. They say they did not accept money for sex, and it sounds like all of them are willing to stand by their beliefs, even if it means staying in jail or going to prison. Tonight, we're talking about losing your religion. That would be your religion if you are a member of the Phoenix Goddess Temple. Crowded Planet Radio here, live and local tonight. KFNX News Talk Radio, 1100. Bunker Bob, Wolf Boy Jack, Danger Wayne, and Very Cool Vince in the house. We have on the line with us the mystic mother of the Goddess Temple here in Phoenix. We have Tracy, and we also have her son on the line, who, uh, Ben, was a practitioner uh, at the temple. Uh, Tracy, Ben, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. So let's uh, pick back up. We were talking to Ben, and there were a couple of things that we wanted to talk about. I do want to get a sense of like a day in the life, what you know Ben would do. But, but before I go into that, there was a point at which we were starting to talk to you in the previous segment, and your phone started to trail off, and we lost your signal a bit there. But you had said something about that you were one of the folks at the temple that started thinking about it as a religion, I think is what you said. Yes, and this happened about, is this a better signal right now? Yeah, the only thing I'd ask you is um, you're, you're coming on like a little too loud almost in the phone. Just keep your mouth a little bit back off the okay. phone because it's breaking up. Great, right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this happened about 10 years ago, about 2002, um, you know, I was re-establishing a relationship with my mother um, from being separated from her for the previous three, four years, getting to know her as an adult, and learning about, you know, coming to realize, wow, she's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And as she taught me about the chakra system and we were learning about the goddess and all types of religions, really, and we just decided, hey, you know, the evidence is here. The culture is here. The history or history is here. This is real. This is what America is for, to, to have your freedom of religion. And in my opinion, learning Tantra, uh, uh, learning about the chakra system, learning about sacred sexuality, sacred touch, is pretty much the realest thing we can even do as human beings in relationship with each other and with the spirit, you know, ourselves. Ben, let me ask you something, and... Uh... You know, I'm, I'm not trying to um, trick you here or something like that, but freedom of religion, I mean, there's historical things in our country. There are things, you know, from around other cultures on our planet from years gone by and all that. I mean, there was a time when some religions would sacrifice live animals. There was a time when some religions would sacrifice a human being for the gods. So would you say that there are or should be or should not be uh, parameters, limits to what a religion can do or call itself? Or do, do you see uh, any element of that at all? Or Well, yeah, absolutely. I think that, to answer your question, no, there shouldn't be. I believe that this is the reason that this country was founded. I mean, even if I'm throwing a tennis ball off the wall against my head, it's somehow I'm being enlightened by that, and I truly believe that. I mean, that's kind of the experience of free will. But you're saying that so, if, if there shouldn't, if you've, if you've said that there shouldn't be limits to what freedom of religion can do, then you accept the idea that if a religion chose to sacrifice other human beings in the name of their religion, that that wouldn't make it illegal to kill that person? That was a sacrifice instead of killing them? Okay, I see. Um, well, that's a very tricky question. I just want, I have to say something. You know, this is what's fascinating to me when the state 
The state is not allowed, the government is not allowed to interfe interfere with religion unless there's what's called a compelling interest standard. And a compelling interest standard is harm to property or life. There are no victims in the temple except... Well, I, I have to correct you there, Tracy. It's, it's not necessarily harm to the property or life. A yeah. compelling interest is just a compelling interest. Uh, it's something that is is necessary. Um, someone taking someone's life is a compelling interest. That would qualify, sure. but that's not the only compelling interest the government can have legally. Right. Yeah, we can get into a deeper discussion of how... Um, for 2,000 years, there has been a proclamation emanating from Rome that says that the only sacred use of the energy of the root, and gentlemen, you may all wonder what the root is, but you all have one, and there, there's a power that Don't emanates now. the root, and the, the proper and wholesome and holy use of the root as emanating from Rome has been taught that it's married sex to make babies, married procreation, and that any other use of the power of the root is wrong and immoral. And this is not true for many of the Eastern religions where you have Tantra, you integrate the energy. Uh, there's, there's eight different cultures, uh, seven or eight, well, eight if you count Christianity, uh, when we speak of the chakra system, we're speaking of energy vortexes where the life force energy enters the body and it exits the body. And again, the gentleman listeners will not have any problem guessing uh, where one of these vortexes are that has a powerful uh, energy that leaves the body. Um, <laughs> for women, uh, the place on the body where there's a vortex where the energy discharges uh, at the greatest amount is the heart and breast. For men, the place where the energy, the life force energy leaves the body with the greatest power and force is the root. We refer to this as the wand of light. In Sanskrit, this is called the lingam, the wand of light. For the female, for the goddess aspect, uh, that same part of the body where the, the torso meets the legs, uh, there's a vortex of energy there, and for her, this is called the yoni, and it mean, it translates from the Sanskrit as gates of heaven. So the the wand of light uh, enters the gates of heaven and illuminates the gates of heaven. I mean, when you get into sacred sexuality, um, uh, yes, and let's do that. Our let's guests, do that our it's guests, more than the our guests, body. our guests, our Tracy and Ben yeah. from the Phoenix Goddess Temple. Here tonight at Crowded Planet Radio. Tracy, I did want to actually ask you, is sex sacred or is sex an animal instinct? You know, it's both. And that's the thing. That's the dichotomy that we're stuck with is that in America, sex education for most of us, I mean, honestly, I, I, I would embarrass my father, but he's passed to the other side. So when I asked my father where babies came from, I was about five or six years old. My father was a very good man, government employee. He, he, I remember he got a, a beer, and he asked me to bring the Barbie dolls, the Barbie and the Ken, and he actually tried to show me with the Barbie and the Ken where the babies come from. But, of course, if you have a Barbie and a Ken, they're not really anatomically correct. Yeah. Um, but, and, but beyond that, you get to uh, – I was married to a beautiful man who was raised in a very traditional um, church. I won't name that church. And when, my, when Ben asked me, Mom, where do babies come from, my husband at the time said, well, we're going to address that in the summer between 6th and 7th grade. That's the right time to address the answer to that. So um, uh, sex education in America looks like this. It's biology and body parts. It's germs and controlling the spread of germs. And it is... Uh, you know, how do you avoid an unwanted pregnancy? Yeah. That's what the sum total of our sex education in America is body parts, germs, and avoiding pregnancy when you're not ready for it. Tracy, um, in a... In a, in a in from a... that, they jump from that to porn. And that's our sex education. So we have to deal with this energy because it is an animal instinct. It's why we exist. If, we, if men didn't have that power in their root, you know, that was so powerful... 
who knows what would happen to humanity. Um, when you, when you, I've had so many people tell me that religion and sex do not go together, but that's their version of reality. If you study these ancient teachings, uh, connecting the soul and your love with the energy and power of the root is a very religious experience. I know when I have an orgasm, it's very common for me to say, oh God, oh God. Oh God! I wonder. I wonder why we say that. Our guests tonight are uh, folks from the Phoenix Goddess Temple. We have Tracy, the Mystic Mother, on the line with us. We have Ben, a practitioner or a former practitioner there. We're going to be talking about sacred sexuality in the next segment. And I also, uh, Tracy, I want to ask you. Just we're going to go to break shortly here. But if you could even just give me a thought or think about this during the break. Culturally, other nations. Repression of women more so in other lands than we live in. You know, Islam uh, discusses itself to be this wonderful, loving religion, yet the women are repressed. I want to ask those questions and more. And don't forget, Wolf Boy Jack, our uh, legal advice is in town here in the studio. So we'll be talking some legal stuff, sacred sexuality. Hang with us here. Crowded Planet Radio. Laura Ingram, Neil Bortz, Lou Dobbs, Michael Savage, KFNX News Talk Radio 1100, the voice of the valley. CNN Radio, I'm Rick Vincent. A Pennsylvania judge ruled today that two former Penn State officials should go to trial on perjury charges and fail to report an alleged sexual assault in 2002 by assistant coach Jerry Sandusky. Following today's testimony by star witness Mike McQuarrie, who says he witnessed the abuse of the young boy, CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin says it's not looking good for Sandusky. It's certainly just horrific when you think about the case against Sandusky. I mean, the, the vividness, the detail. I, and so, you know, Sandusky remains in an absolute world of trouble. McCrory testified he told university officials about the abuse, but police were not notified. The Chicago Bears have waived wide receiver Sam Hurd, who's facing charges of conspiring to possess and distribute cocaine. Hurd was released today on a $100,000 bond. Senate negotiators were unable to work on a comprehensive deal on extending the payroll tax cut and instead of proposing a two-month extension. The most trusted name in news, this is CNN Radio. Hi, everybody. Jim Howell from the KFNX Weather Center. Here's your weekend forecast. Tomorrow looks pretty good. Mostly sunny to partly cloudy, 66 for a high. We do have clouds from California start to move across tomorrow night into Sunday. That'll produce some lightly scattered showers around the deserts on Sunday afternoon. No big accumulations, but highs about 57. Jim Howell, KFNX News Talk Radio, 1100. Currently in downtown Phoenix, it's 60 degrees. Lars Larson. Weeknights at 10 on KFNX. Right now at My Trade America, you can get a barter line of credit from $2,000 to $50,000 with no credit check. We'll help you boost your business big time to lower your cash costs and generate new sales. With services available like advertising, website design, signage, and bookkeeping, and personal services like restaurant, auto repair, and vacation rentals. Get the barter line of credit you need today, $2,000 to $50,000 at MyTradeAmerica, MyTradeAmerica.com. Fees and restrictions apply. Finding insurance coverage that fits can be confusing, but with the right help, you can see the bigger picture and be better prepared no matter what life sends you. I'm Richard Sailing, your local agent with InSphere Insurance Solutions. We provide people with affordable and complete insurance solutions from highly rated companies designed to fit your needs and budget. Contact me, Richard Sailing, at 602-206-3911 to get the solutions you need with the service you deserve. I love my husband, but I didn't realize our difficulties had to do with his drinking. Our pastor suggested I go to Al-Anon family groups. I didn't think I would be comfortable, but I decided to try a meeting. The Al-Anon meeting really opened my eyes. Are you troubled by someone's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al-Anon family group meeting from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-ALANON. Phoenix Goddess Temple, our guest tonight here at Crowded Planet Radio. 
Is it a religion? Is it a business? Is it a service? Right now, uh, the folks from the Phoenix Goddess Temple are in the midst of limbo about that. House arrest and various states of uh, whatever legal mumbo jumbo. We'll, we have our lawyer, Wolf Boy Jack, with us <laughs> here tonight. Description. He'll he'll get to that stuff. Uh, meantime, Tracy, Mystic Mother, Ben, former practitioner from the Phoenix Goddess Temple. Welcome back to the second half of Crowded Planet Radio. Thanks for joining us tonight. You know, I can tie the first question about what do men do in the temple with your question about other cultures and how they treat women. Okay. It's a, it's a stunning uh, changeover to enter a space that is absolutely controlled by women. It's well, sure, that, that insane, makes sense. I mean, changer. let's face it, if I walk into a sports bar, it feels one way, and if I walk into a hair salon, it feels another way. So, yeah, we fully, we fully get that. I mean, uh, during the break, Wayne, uh, Danger Wayne was disagreeing with me a little bit. I was saying that Islam is more repressive of women and all that, and he said it's not that way in all of the Islamic countries, like Turkey's not that way and so forth, but... I still say that, you know, 90% of the Islamic women are in burqas, which is a form of repression. So do you feel, do you feel Tracy or Ben, uh, that what's going on legally for you guys here with the Phoenix God's Temple, do you feel like it's uh, something even to do with repression uh, from the women's side? Like you said, most religions are more male-centric. Uh, is there some religious aspect to this in, in repression or is how are they uh, how, how is the law approaching what they're telling you that you did wrong they absolutely they can't even conceive of that we would be that the, the, the men and women that go to the, our facility were there to study worship commune with and be in fellowship over the idea that the Creator is a mother and what's interesting is god the father if you have a mother goddess she's not sitting there giving sermons and and having you go home and, and outline your scriptures and highlight your bible your sacred writing it's not like that the upper chakras are the father the lower chakras are uh, is the body the, the mother is the wisdom of the body women make the babies women are naturally the wisdom keepers of the body. And when we get into what's going on in other countries, you know, you've heard this before, that men, and I, I've heard it, and I was like, I cannot believe that. But after 5,000 hours of practice over a 10-year period, I do believe it. Men go through their day constantly uh, aware of the magnetic power of their roots, and wow, could this wand of light connect with that woman or that woman, what would happen if I could get next to that woman? Men think about sex constantly. They, it is, it is a net, it's like, it's like having the power of this flow and, and actually because they're supposed, because there's, the women are taught not to be sexual or they're bad women, they're unholy women if they are sexually expressive and free. Then the women are saying, and literally the women are taught to withhold sexual favor until the man makes a good offer. Is it, My father is it, said, "Don't give away the cow uh, if they get the if they get the milk for free. They don't right, give away the right. cow." I, I was taught to withhold sexual favor, withhold access to my body until I got a good offer. And so talk, a, so talk a, about institution. Talk about that, Tracy. Tracy, talk about that. Ethic. Sorry. <laughs> Talk about that in relation to the temple itself, you know, regarding the donations and that, as far as, you know, the services or teachings and, and things that would take place at the temple, were they available to people if there was no donation involved? Well, here's the thing. Um, the laws around prostitution speak specifically of a sexual arrangement, uh, sexual service, uh, for a fee arrangement. I wish I had the exact language. You know, in front I've of got the it. exact language, language, as a matter of fact. We have a lawyer. <laughs> we okay, have a lawyer. Do you want to give us the language around it? It's something Prostitution sexual. Prostitution is defined as Here we go. engaging Here we go. in or agreeing or offering to engage in sexual conduct under a fee arrangement with any person for money or any other valuable consideration. Consideration of the law means something given in exchange. 
that. So it's like a condo you know or a car. Exactly. Imagine, imagine in any house, Ice Valley, and it's a it's a, a lovely morning, and the wife wakes up and or the girlfriend wakes up and says, "Honey, I want to go to the spa today with my girlfriend, but I don't have any money in my account." I really want to, I need to go relax. You know, the kids are making me crazy. And the husband says, well, I could take care of that for you. I could give you that $200 that you need to go have a spa day with the girls. Do you think you could take care of me before you go? <laughs> and she's like, well, of course I could. I'm, you know, and, and so. Well, now that's, he, that's, he, a, ma so a, that's a married couple, though. Trans Tracy, that's a married couple. The well, let's say it's a boyfriend, girlfriend. I mean, this is really interesting. In the goddess temple, men always show respect and honor to the woman by giving her something. It's always that way. But it's does it ancient. Have, is it's it... ancient. Now, I want to say that in our temple, people were told, both the practitioners and the seekers, that there was no guarantee that anything in particular would happen because it would be created in that moment one of our practices is self-sovereignty. Another practice, which means each person is deciding for themselves in each moment what's going to happen. When you step into the transformation chamber, there was never any guarantee that anything in particular mm. would happen. So the practitioner stepping in without a guarantee that she'll receive any or he'll receive any uh, offering of support for the healing that they're going to give. Now those and those offerings has no guarantee Tracy? that they're going to get what they want. Tracy, those so they offerings are they uh, are they could they be just uh, uh, you get a hug or something that's not material? We I have done I have done healings that were uh, sensual, energetic. Um, and when I was completed with that hour or two hour or even four hour um, healing time uh, where I was teaching and guiding and, and helping people balance their energy and, and helping them worship the, holy, the holiness of their own body, and when that was over, uh, I was offered nothing. I was left an empty envelope. Uh, the person uh, ran out of the shower and, and took their shower and ran out the back door. I've been offered books, candles. Well, somebody offered me uh, a, a nugget of crack cocaine at one point. I have been offered Now, that's a illegal. Crack. That I know is illegal. In Tracy, now, listen. If, um, if the... Well, uh, if the if strange the things, and I just have to say to the goddess, thank you, goddess. Maybe the next person will honor me in such a way that I can pay my bills today. Do, so, you, do you mention that to your next, uh, the person you have to heal? Like, before the healing starts, do you say... Do you tell them what's happened before? Like there was a guy who was just in here and he no, I he ran out and I don't feel hurt. good right now, so let's I'll try to do my best for you. No, you have to enter in, and that's why you know real prostitutes would come to the temple and see if they could work there and learn and study. I would say you have to take classes, you have to come to the moon circles, you need to be part of this community. Which which so classes would they would they take if classes? Would they take classes uh, at other schools or, or classes that you taught? They could take classes at other schools and with us both. But I want to get this idea across. When you talk to a real prostitute who is selling access to her body for money and you tell her, I invite anybody that's listening to this program to call up five of the women on Backpage who advertise as escorts or body rub girls and say, I'd like to know if you'll do this, this, and this. And would you, and by the way, can I give you the money at the end? I'm not going to give you the money at the beginning. I'll give you the money at the end if I like it. But I might not give you the money if I don't like what happened. Well, so let me ask you, uh, let me ask you okay. then, with regard to this whole thing with donations, money before, money after, or whatever, um, somehow the law was able to arrest quite a number of people from the temple. So what happened during that sting or whatever was happening undercover that gave them enough to handcuff people and take them, uh, you know? Because they're saying that it doesn't matter that the offering of support was voluntary and came at the end of the healing session. They also, they basically are, they're saying that... Um, uh, and, why, and Tracy, why, why would you... You know, you're a good uh, spokesperson 
for the temple, for sure, uh, quite evident. And what would then be your counter to that if, if you find yourself having to defend that, this idea of uh, payment or donation, call it whatever you like, it's currency. There's a currency there of some type. Yes. What, what, how, would, how would you how would you then uh, – I you know, describe defend that transaction. How, how how would you how would you describe the difference of whether it's you know uh, prior or after um, how that matters? I mean, if if I'm the attorney general, convince me that receiving the money after doesn't make it a a, a transaction of prostitution. A free arrangement. You know what? This is a gray area, but in practicality, if you ask a thousand women who are in the adult section of the, of the of the paper, or in the adult section online, a thousand out of a thousand women. Let's just say a hundred, because it makes percentages easy. I have not. But they always use a thousand to take a poll. So, okay. but, and, and we could so either way. One of the things that I have to do before we go to trial, I have to get a thousand. I have to get a, a, a conduct a survey because the women who actually do this for money would never do an hour or two hours of healing and touch and energy, this type of thing, without the money up front. In the Desert Diva case, which was a big escort agency bus three years ago, um, and by the way, I want to say that we're nonprofit and every penny's accounted for. We had, a, we had immaculate, immaculate nonprofit uh, uh, accounting, immaculate. Every penny went to ministries and facility education and even free healings for, uh, you know, what we subsidized healings for people who couldn't afford. Did you have status as, as, as a church, Tracy, for, yes, for tax purposes? Yes, absolutely as a church. But what I want to say is every woman that I've ever met that actually sells sex, she laughs at you if you say, well, I want you to go in there with the seeker and work with him or work with her or work with that couple, and you're not going to know for sure if you're going to receive anything at the, t at the end of your time together. You just have to do it on faith. At the Phoenix it's Goddess Temple, season. though, at the Phoenix Goddess Temple, though, um, at the end of every uh, – Practice Real or, prostitutes will never do that. They want at, the money up. I'm front. trying to ask you a question. At at the uh, at the end of being in the transformation chamber, and whether it was an hour, two, three, or four, whatever it was, there wasn't a case where a person could just leave, and there would be no donation. Correct? Absolutely happened. Yes, it happened to everybody that worked in that temple. Absolutely. What percentage of times would you say that that happened? You know, it had to do with the person's matrix, which is where you get into mysticism again. You mean the you mean like the individual practitioner? Individual energetic matrix. Yes. Okay, so even <laughs> so, even if it was twenty percent with one person and two percent another, what yeah. would you know? Give us. We're not going to you know hold you to this figure, but best best that you could you know say what. Well, this circles what, back around. I would say as a practitioner as well that. 9.5, 9.8 out of 10 people are happy and, and there for the service, there for the connection. So 2 two to 5% would not leave a donation then? Or less. Okay. I'm well, just trying to get a sense of, you know. There's a saying in Buddhism, when a pickpocket comes across a saint, when a pickpocket meets a saint, all they see is pockets. There's another saying, I don't know where it comes from, but it says, When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. We are here tonight teaching you folks, because we are Crowded Planet Radio. I am Bunker Bob. He's Wolf Boy Jack. He's an attorney. He'll do some uh, investigation in the next segment. Danger Wayne spinning the tunes. And Very Cool Vince is delivering the Z Pizza right now, so we're taking a break. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D., host of Healthline. Join me live to get your questions answered and hear the latest breakthrough information for you and your family. Our product line, Quantum Nutrition Labs, delivers what others only promise, nutrition that really works. This holiday season, we have several Quantum Stage supplements on special, perfect as a gift for yourself or loved ones. Support your health during the cold winter season with a premier winter kit. Promote your best digestion with the HCL Detox Kit and enjoy whole body herbal rejuvenation with Quantum 360. 
Everything is buy two and get a third one free. What a deal. This holiday season, give the gift of great health. Call 800-370-3447 to take advantage of this limited time offer. That's 800-370-3447. Experience for yourself a quantum shift to great health. An important message from Medicare. Hi, Sarah. I just spoke with Pamela. Did you know the health care law gives us new Medicare preventive benefits? Like a yearly wellness visit. Well, I... It's our chance to talk with our doctor about our care. That's what I would. Medicare also covers recommended cancer and preventive screenings. Actually, I was the one who told Pamela. Huh. Uh-huh. Learn more at Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. And tell your friends and family. Share the news. Share the health. The Lars Larson Show is on the air. America's war in Iraq will be over. That's not the extraordinary thing. Certainly our troops deserve their thanks. Here's a guy who fought against the Iraq war, who said we should never have done it, that it was a waste of time and money and, of course, lives. And now he's standing up as commander-in-chief saying, you've been successful. You've left behind a stable Iraqi government. Of course, that's in relative terms. This guy should be ashamed of himself. The Lars Larson Show, Monday through Fridays at 10 p.m. We who are about to die of overstimulation salute you. She's got it. She's the goddess, Venus. All right, Banana Rama there helping us out. <laughs> Funny they should be called Banana Rama. Anyway, all right, KFNX News Talk Radio 1100, Crowded Planet Radio, spending one more segment. With folks from the Phoenix Goddess Temple, we have on the line with us the mystic mother of the Phoenix Goddess Temple, Tracy, and uh, we have her son, who is also a practitioner there for a while, her son, Ben. Thank you guys again for spending some of your Friday evening with us. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. For having us. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. I never did really get, if I could just get even 60 seconds of Ben, you know, a day in the life at the temple, you arrived there at what time? Okay, so my original title in the temple was Temple Steward. And just like the biblical term, uh, term steward, it is basically the right-hand person of the building of the facility. So my, I, a lot of times, was living in temple, or if not, I was getting there, um, I'd say between 4 and 6 in the morning, and started the day off getting the laundry fresh and helping out, uh, you know, setting up the chamber, putting the energy with incense and prayers in the building. Um, basically, yeah, having the keys to the building, any loose handles, any. So you were like uh, a you were like the temple property manager. Pretty much like, like the temple. So you you would have miscellaneous miscellaneous duties. I mean. You you ran yeah. you ran errands you were, you were like a per, like a would it be like a personal assistant? Give us give us something that the look the Phoenix Goddess Temple is not as common of a business say as like a Seven Eleven. You know what I mean? Where somebody says, uh, "Yeah, I'm a clerk at Seven Eleven," and we know what that is. The Phoenix Goddess Temple is a more unique uh, organization. So when you say you're the steward and all that stuff, I mean. That I need a little better picture for the listening audience who, like I said, that's why I'm saying something like, you know, property manager, personal assistant. Give us some terminologies that are more commonplace in a business environment to describe. Okay, we, we lost, I think. Was that Ben we lost? or? Okay. Tracy, are you still there with us? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, we'll, 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 we'll switch to a different question. We'll get oh, Ben no, back wanna, in line. I want to address that because oh. the language really matters. It sure does. Use, when you use, you want to make it a business language, but you see Ben spoke of setting intention, lighting candles, lighting incense. He would play uh, spiritual music. So he was an altar boy. Yes, there you go. I like that better. Okay, so Ben was an altar boy. I just... You gotta, it's got to be relatable, you know? Yes. Because you have a sacred intention during the whole thing. Ben loves to I was helping the women and other men, um, you know, be comfortable and learn the culture, learn the, you know, the, the ins and outs. And so the, you're a bit, a bit of like, of a bit of like a host then as well. A tour guide. Yeah. Okay. 
A little bit of tour guide, a little bit of personal assistant. Okay. You are a Ben of all trades. <laughs> like a jack of all trades, right? I mean, you had a variety of duties there, but more or less just uh, an well, assistant. I was, male, I was a male person in a goddess temple. So basically, just oh. like any other male-female relationship, you're the guy who's on call to serve the goddess. Okay, baby, you need me to go grab some lumber? Let me go get some wood for the fire. Let me go get some water and some fruit for the picnic, you know? It's that type of relationship. And then also training the goddesses. You know, of course, they need to have the male presence there for protection, and it's just a natural thing. I, the training of the goddesses, I, I don't exactly uh, follow, but... Well, part of, part of our, part of our um, classes... We work with magnetic tantra, so one of the basic trainings you have coming into the temple is learning the feminine, the masculine, how those balance out with each other, with their partner or another, you know. So you, um, you uh, like, in an, in an example, like, say, if somebody's learning CPR, um, and I don't mean Crowd of Planet Radio, but if they're learning uh, car cardiopulmonary, somebody's learning cardiopulmonary resuscitation, They'll have, like, those mannequins there they can practice on. So you were the male uh, equivalent where, like, the goddesses had a, a, the male presence to be able to work with. Exactly. And then I had other brothers that were there as well holding space. And part of something we all need to learn as a man is how to hold space for women because that's where they feel comfortable. That's where they're allowed to be feminine instead of being on edge in their own survival mode. You know, there's okay. a whole difference. All right. And being a man and being a woman. So. All right. Well, that, that, that's that. a that, so. I guess going back to the word steward that you used. All right. Then that really kind of sums it up. Now, um, I want to play for both of you. We have a clip from Attorney General Bill Montgomery, Maricopa County Attorney. I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Maricopa County, uh, who made a, a, a brief comment uh, in a in a. In a uh, press release form or whatever about the Goddess Temple and the, the case and so forth, and then get some reaction to that. Go ahead, Wayne. And let's too. not mix religious freedom and religious practices with criminal activity. The two are two very different things and should not be confused. And I don't care whether or not you want to call it a donation, a fee, whether or not you want to call your activity healing or a tantric practice, accepting money for sex is against the law. All right, that was uh, Maricopa County Attorney General right. Bill Montgomery. I'd like to speak to that real quick. Okay, please, Ben. In my ben. opinion, I've talked to lawyers, of course, I was living out here in California when this whole thing shut down. And basically, a lot of lawyers' opinions is that the Phoenix Police has performed a hate crime against the religion of Tantra and the Goddess Temple. And so the, the simple fact of them disregarding our language of speakers and, and offers of support and this temple language, the fact that they used $100,000 of taxpayer money to bust into a door that was open for the public and raid this place, that's, that's a hate crime against Tantra. So, <clears throat> do, uh, do Tantra practices, you know, around the planet work under the same type of um, setup that you guys have with donations or... What what, other, what I would like to address this, I would. Okay. When I'm married in the Catholic Church, I wrote a sequence of checks that were for uh, pre-marriage counseling uh -huh. uh, for, to pay the uh, priest to conduct the marriage ceremony. I wrote another check for the lady who played the organ. I wrote another check to use the building. I wrote another check for the fellowship hall for the reception. I wrote a sequence of, of financial payments. Well, I was told how much money would be acceptable or pleasing to that group. We, we request these offerings. We don't always get these offerings. Some people leave nothing. Some people leave less. Some people leave more. There was no guarantee that we would ever receive these financial offerings. Let, and me, let me ask you this, Tracy. When, when you because, did, but see, I'm going to get to When you something. did receive an offering, it was, was it generally around the same amount, or did you request was there a request for a specific amount? We, we, because most of the women and most of the practitioners would only do, some would do five or six hours in a week. Specifically, the amount of money that we asked for was specifically to cover, the temple was $60,000 in debt when they came and got us. They thought we were loaded with cash. There was no cash there. 
Hey, Tracy, just real quick. Yeah, you know, we just got if, about 60 seconds left. If somebody did stiff you, would you allow them back into the temple to get another healing? You know what? They, they would return for other healings, but in the end, that's very disrespectful. There's so many men that want to have orgasms and would love to not have to deal with a, a feminine to get at it, just have the orgasm. That's a porn mentality, just have the orgasm and then not give anything back to the woman. Uh, you know, if that was allowed to continue, the temple would be swamped like a boat sinking within three days. So luckily, we had men who honored Luckily, most of the men honored the fake feminine. Well, our guests this evening at Crowded Planet Radio have been Mystic Mother Tracy and Steward, Steward Ben. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I guess we'll be following what goes on with your case. You guys are now faced with some legal stuff, which will be taking place over who knows how long. It'll be months, years, whatever's going to go on. But... Uh, that's that's our show for tonight. I don't know if we helped answer any questions about whether it's sacred sexuality, animal sexuality, prostitution. I'm not quite sure. Uh, to be continued, I suppose. Wolf Boy, I mean, any closing Things comments? Things will go on for a while. Yeah, we can always step them back. Yeah, okay. Well, as things progress, we'll, uh, we'll revisit this topic. Danger Wayne, thanks for your help. Very cool, Vince. Thank you. And Z Pizza, thank you as well for your sponsorship yes. and your pizza. Let's chow down. Yeah.